Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Magic Mike's, proudly sponsored by our Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, and our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. And our newest co-sponsor, Cardamajigs.com, presenting Cubamajigs. These durable, scratch-resistant plastic cases are perfect for cubes, sideboards, and more, with new designs every Monday. I am Evan Irwin, and I'm going to get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Aaron Campbell. Ahoy, mateys. Ruben Bressler. I can't possibly top that, so I will also give you an ahoy hoy. How you doing? And, and the raffle's hi. broke in. Oh no, oh no, I, I actually I haven't started yet because I'm terrible at what I do. So go ahead and fill time and I'll fix it. Aggressive. That. Aggressive. Well, you why don't you tell us the... about a trumpet blast, Ruben, while I fix this? Oh, sure. Well, if you support us at our highest level on uh, Patreon, which we have a lot of new patrons, I'm not exactly sure why, Six but- yeah. yeah, six in a week. If anybody wow. knows why we got so many new patrons this week, um, let us do that again. Yeah. Um, if you support us at the highest level, which I believe is $100, you can get up on the Jumbotron right here on the show, and we will read out a message to the people uh, from Evan Irwin's very own voice box. We might even say things about ourselves. Like, someone paid Evan to, like, talk about himself. and Yeah. To say that so I was you, wrong. You can tell yeah. me I was wrong, and I will say it to myself. To the world. So if you want, there we go. Streamlabs is working. So if you want to uh, ha announce a tournament series at your local store, if you want to say happy birthday to a significant other, if you want to tell one of us that we're wrong and that we should be very, very uh, sad. respectfully, of course. Respectfully, of course, we have the right to the right of refusal. Should we yeah. want, not want to read some words out, mm. but uh, if you want to call us out for something. That'll only cost you a, a crisp uh, $100 bill in a month. So uh, for those uh, who are a part of the patrons, uh, first of all, thank you. But second of all, we want to know what you would like in terms of the emotes and the loyalty badges, because I finally got off my butt and looked that stuff up. And we yeah. totally need those things, and people have absolutely already qualified for them, and we love you, and I'm sorry. So I want to fix that. So let's figure out what we want. Phil, jump into I mean, our I'm Discord. I'm still waiting on my tax forms. <laughs> You know, a man tries to do things in the world. If there's meanwhile, there's a raffle. I'll remember that when I'm sitting in prison for tax fraud. It's fine. Meanwhile, the best place to get a hold of us for that, by the way, is of course uh, the feedback improvement channel in our Discord, which yes. is part of if which you are a patron of the channel. They read it. I don't, but yeah. We look at it. You should. It's fun. It's not bad. It, it makes me anxious. Okay. Fair. Well, either way, it's it's all been very, very positive, and we appreciate it. Um, and you, you'll get a link to the Discord as soon as you become any sort of patron, uh, $1 or up. But if you're $5 and up, you get to that pre-show, and it gets... A little freaky up in there. I'm not gonna lie. It's it a little fun. freaky. We had a very lovely, positive conversation tonight. So. We did. And if you have uh, followed me for a long time and and have wondered what happens when there's no filter on Evan, right? <laughs> who boy. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's get to the good goods. All right. We get to the first pick. There is just there, there's just no question as to what it is. Magic Esports today at 1:20 p.m. Eastern Standard. Uh, Tweeted, Owen Turtenwald will not be participating in the Mythic Invitational, and we are replacing him with Brian David Marshall. Mm. This mm. felt like a bomb being dropped. Like, I was at work. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of scrolling through my phone, and I, I, my stomach dropped when I read this. And then seeing the reaction on my feed of sort of like the, the blast radius or like the aftermath was just immediate and powerful and very confusing. And it was just like... Whoa. Yeah. I mean, f first to get this out of the way, congratulations to Brian David Marshall for being chosen. Absolutely. He is an, an, an icon, a, a pillar of the magic community and absolutely deserves to be there. No right. questions asked. Being an, an invite tournament to see him on the big stage. I, I'm excited for it. You know, Brian's still a, a fine magic player, you know, just because he covered it doesn't mean he can't play it. No. Uh, so, so I'm, I'm really excited. So congratulations to him. I wish him nothing but the best. At worst, he goes home with 7,500 bucks just for showing up. Absolutely. And that's awesome. That's, that's yeah. terrific. And it is, it is uh, serendipitous and fortuitous that his first round matchup will be against Autumn Burchett, whom we thought oh. was going to be his last time on magic coverage interviewing the uh, first mag mythic championship winner right. at his last pro tour like event uh that mythic championship number one but we'll get to face off against autumn in the round of 64 so that's interesting that's super interesting uh that said um soon came the questions uh as little as two days ago 
Owen was talking about, tweeting about, streaming about how excited he was about playing in the event and how this was like, this is the largest magic event that there's ever been. And it's not even really close for a variety of reasons we'll talk about later, but uh, this was a thing. And so you take someone who's had a career who has grown up in the magic community, who has honestly went from someone who was very, I felt like very a negative force to a very positive force, or at least trying his best to do so. And then he is no longer a part of the event. Is yeah. he still a part of the MPL? Uh, as I understand it, it's no longer listed in his Twitter profile. I don't know if it was ever listed in his Twitter profile. I'm just noting it's not there as I understand it right now. So there's some sort of fallout happening as we see it. And it's difficult to know what is being said on what it could arguably call a rumor mill at this point, yeah. honestly. Um, and, and we are not in the business of discussing rumors and things that could be happening. I would like to be a more fact-based show and tell you exactly what I know, what I do know for a fact. And all I do know for a fact at this point is Owen is out, BDM is in. There's probably a really interesting story there. I just don't know what it is yet. Right. Therefore, I don't feel confident explaining what I've heard, quote-unquote, and what has actually happened and or impacted this decision by Wizards. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what made today, you know, so awkward for me in particular. And I kind of touched on this in the in the pre-show is that, you know, through the years of us doing this show, you know, we've all become privy to information that we may not normally we're supposed to be privy to. And so, you know, I'm sure that we've all heard things, whether it be from friends or whether it be from peers that we have in the community. And so it is a little difficult to juggle the responsibility that we have doing the show where we want to bring you current events. We want to bring you the tea, but we also want to manage those relationships. You know, we, we don't want people to misplace their trust in us. And so it was very difficult for me to see these things kind of happening around me. Some of these takes being accurate, some not being accurate accurate, you know, just a lot of whatever, me wanting to say something so desperately and going, I, I just don't have enough to go on. And, you know, I don't want to jeopardize any any friendships or relationships by saying what I might have been told. Um, and so for me, it was particularly awkward. And I was like, I just, I was just like, I don't want to talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> to I be was clear, just like, we don't have any confirmation of anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the context clues that I have are that uh, Owen hasn't tweeted and no one has said that he's in the hospital or died. And so that, because there is that vacuum of information, people are jumping to conclusions and speculation and intrigue of that kind of stuff. We here at Magic Mike's would prefer to not be TMZ, um, although it is relatively undeniable that we did have like more people at the start of the show tonight, and we always do whenever there's something ridiculous like <laughs> whenever whenever there's not, tea to be but spilled. But if you're coming, if you're coming here for that, you're not. Um, uh, sorry, friends, not gonna get it. Yeah. Um, Although I do appreciate that people think of us when when bad news goes down or even good news. I, I, I appreciate people want to know what we think about things, but yes. we're not really sure what to think. To be quite the honest. good news, there is good news here. The good news is that it does not seem as if anyone has been hurt or anyone has had anything physical physical harm happen to them um there's no health reason why this happened um which would have been really unfortunate and would have really put in a damper on the whole event right now it's just we don't know and of course you know the the devil you don't know and the devil you do know which one is worse well it's debatable in this case the picking of Brian David Marshall is an inspired choice. There were a number of people it that could so have been hype. Yeah. Um, not the least of which was Jeff Hoagland, whom we've talked about not getting the invite to this as well. Um, but there are a number of folks, uh, legendary figures in Magic the Gathering, in addition to competitive people in Magic the Gathering and esports in general, who this could have been considered for. But it was 100% just everyone was behind it as soon as like oh D bdm gets it yeah obviously BDM it. BDM i felt a little bit no bad though. i felt a little bit bad though that his um that this wonderful moment was a little bit tainted by all of the speculation and the backlash and the digging and, and that the focus was kind of shifted a little bit from him like i i would have rather it been all about him mm. um and i'm sure that he's you know fine and everything like that but i would have loved to have just been all bdm all the time and unfortunately the, the focus has shifted a little bit today Right. There, there is a tale to be told, and it is full of drama, and I can't wait to bring it to you when we eventually know what in the world it is. All right, so enough of that. 
Let's go ahead and move on to Gather the Townsfolk, where MTGesports.com is officially a thing now. They made a whole website. Uh, yeah. They talk that about sort of... That website was a mess. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> I saw people on Twitter that were kind of you know, commenting on some of the issues that apparently there was a young lady on coverage whose face kept disappearing. I think her name yeah. was Evie something. And I saw hipsters constantly tagging her that was like, are you working this thing or you're not? Because depending on when you go to the website, your face is there or it's not. And so you had this disappearing coverage person. Um, you had, um, I guess the links to the social media were dead links. Um, like this website was very clearly rushed out and it was just like, girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we do have an official brand now for the Magic okay. Pro League, which looks pretty cool. Uh, they did piss off all the store owners because they have shop now at Amazon.com yes! at the bottom of it. <coughs> like, yikes. <laughs> Wizards, that gets an official yikes. Uh, it Now look, for what it's worth, I have no problem with that button being there. But to have one next to it that says, or check out your local game store and link to the store, the, you know, the new store finder thing that you did that looks really cool link to that and and support the store as well as the amazon sales it's okay but overall i think they're doing a good job in terms of trying to brand the mbl they're trying to give you things to read about it big names and why you care about them and you know things about them and whatnot so i do think this is a step forward for what we would describe as the esport of magic Yes, I like that Wizards is meeting these these people halfway. You know, I've always said that I think start building is a two way street, and um, there are a lot of pros out there who, quite frankly, aren't very good at marketing themselves. But if Wizards is willing to meet them halfway and say, "Okay, we will tell people when you are streaming, we will literally force feed you to people. If you could just do the rest, you could very well be." a big thing. And so I hope that I, I, I have already seen people who are not very good at that kind of trying to, and that makes me think it's doing its job where it's like, yes, we're going to see some real star building here. And I think the star building is working. And I love the pictures. I love the very professional looking photos that they have. I love the clips that they're doing. I love that you can find out when these people are actually streaming. I just hope that all of them start streaming, just as Stefan looking at you. Um, and so um, I love her. It's fine. Um, I, I'm really excited to see where this goes. Where is the coverage page on this website? <laughs> Good question. I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> I guess I, I've spent the <clears> last, <throat> since we started talking about the topic and I clicked on the link, looking for the coverage. It's, uh, it's under the events link. Where the is it? It's under the events up at the top. Under the events up at the top. Yep. Great. And you scroll awesome. down and you'll get there. <clears throat> scroll down and I'll get there is a great thing to hear. That's a terrific thing to hear. I'm going to call my memoir that. Wow. <laughs> well, all I know I'm is... Just, I'm too stupid to find it. So. It's cool. The point is that MDG <laughs> That's Esports... That's going to be the name of your memoir. <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, it is a thing, but they also announced the coverage team, the broadcast team, if you will. Right. That's what I'm looking for. That's <clears> right. right. Well, yeah. I, I looked up the tweet and it's linked in the doc if you need it, but ah, okay. all I know is that they have revamped who is doing coverage for Magic, um, and I can't really express how kind of crazy it is to see Brian Kibler on the broadcast team for a Magic Arena esports event. You know that's got to feel good. Like, if you're Kibler, you know that you got to be like, so. <laughs> when he got that phone call, he was like, oh, really? I'm sorry, what? You want me to I'm do sorry. what? For how I'm much? Sorry. Okay. Excuse me? Okay. 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 Your people talk to my people <laughs> who were trying to talk to your people, then See went to I Hearthstone. Pencil you in, like. <clears throat> well, the, uh, the stage host, quote unquote, it's going to be day nine. The desk yep. host is going to be Brian Kibler. Uh, Chion, Paul Chion is going to be an analyst alongside David Love Williams. <clears throat> uh, Alias Five, a new broadcaster, uh, she's going to do the play-by-play -play, along with Marshall Sutcliffe, who we know. And Becca Scott is going to be a reporter. I have not seen Becca Scott anywhere. Is that anybody I know anything about So it? Becca I Scott know. is a, uh, a host uh, who does a ton of games-related stuff. She's also one of the hosts for the Warhammer tournament circuit, I believe, in okay. addition to hosting Game the Game and How to Play uh, for a lot of series. Um, she also recently hosted a five-part uh, Getting into Magic the Gathering series okay. for Geek and Sundry. Uh, and she's very knowledgeable. I was very surprised watching that, how she was basically managing these four player commander games and doing pretty effective play by play on them. So um, yeah, she's uh, she knows what she's doing. Well, for this round, there is no Megan uh, or there's also uh, no Maria. 
yeah. and there's no Richard Hagon. So uh, at the uh, Rich, we were tweeted out. I'm at the uh, hashtag Mythic Invitational, where I'm working on the production backstage, i.e., not on air. Mm. Uh, like Tim, Riley, Simon, and Maria, I'm sorry to not be bringing you this incredible event in our normal roles. Um, you have an epic four days of watching. We'll see you all at the MC London. Hugs are. So that's uh, that's one of those things where it's it's tough to kind of see that transition in many ways. This is the BDM's final event, and now Rich is not in front of the camera, and we don't get those really awesome, at least what I thought were really awesome, end of the show talks that Rich mm-hmm. is so good at. Like his ability to just wrap up the, the the whole show essentially, and sometimes it was almost poetic type, you know, uh, uh, lyrics that he was kind of come up with, you know, sort of poetry almost in many ways. But mm-hmm. you know, his idea to kind of sum it up, and it's like I feel good, and Rich is there, and you know, and this is Rich saying bye, and I'm like, that's a thing. Did you hit the mute button? <laughs> wow. Yes, I did. I accidentally hit the, I, I hit the I hit the mic, which hit the mute button. Oh my God. I'm having flashbacks to my dad butt dialing me. It just doesn't understand how buttons work. Just... Wow. You know, you tried it. I was trying to do this. I was trying to do that. And one thing leads to another. All right. One now, of do things... we have confirmation that like this is, it was my understanding that this event in particular was very unique in that this was more of the culture and the community yes. and people were being invited. So do we know that like he's not coming back for like the the other no. approach for the approach? So it's just no, no. kind of for this. We, right. we, all we know is what they just told us, which okay. was this announcement. Um, and so I foresee it being a lot more like other uh, esports tournaments where we don't really know who's doing any given tournament uh, until the announcement happens, lots, mm-hmm. lots of more turnover, uh, and and lots more faces. There were a couple of surprising things about this particular commentary lineup uh, that I wanted to point out real quick. First of all, hmm. all Americans is like kind of a little awkward. Um, there is no, there's no uh, Asian representation. Well, Alias is from South Africa. That's fair. Um, you have Dave Williams. And well, sure. Uh, the 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 uh, the race and sex makeup is is great, um, but no Europeans, no Japanese pros. Someone's saying there's a young man from Europe. T H I T S. Tice is a player. Oh, there's plenty of players. Oh, players so, from all over the world. About in coverage. Okay. Right. Like Savitz is from Finland. Tice is from the Netherlands. Show is Swedish. These are all pros who are from other games coming into magic not to mention folks like bolivo paulo vitor martin juza all of our normal pros that we're used to in magic Mm -hmm. there's plenty of of non-americans playing um alias is the only non-american in coverage and so i thought that that was a little bit awkward um and the fact that it's sort of been dropped in last second with who these people are as if it's i mean we sort of know who day nine is already from as magic folks but you know, Alias, the, the general magic population is less familiar with Alias, although she is a hell of a streamer and puts in a ton of work and has been running her own tournament series on her channel for Magic Arena for the past two months. Wow. So totally on board with She's going to be the most knowledgeable person in the booth with Marshall. Let me put it that way. Hmm. Um, and so that's that's super cool. I just thought that it was a little bizarre that they that they uh, that they did it this way. The other thing that was awkward is I believe there's an eighth person on the commentary team um that the hipsters tweeted about that was like that that coverage graphic of seven people didn't have the eighth person no, that i haven't I uh, uh that i haven't been able to or didn't go uh, look up again and also only two play-by-play people for the entire tournament seems like a low number it might be where that eighth person happens to slide in sure uh that said they are going to also use the uh cardboard live extension that which... thing has just that thing is everywhere nowadays yeah, it started out on the SCG tour and they used it for a while. And then finally at the, I believe it was the LA event, they used it uh, for the coverage that CFB did there. And so this is the cardboard.live is the website. And essentially it allows you to look at things like deck lists and I believe also player bios and things. Uh, yeah, in real time. so it, it adds this um, on the side of the screen, it adds this little arrow that you can click on and it will pop out a tab that will give you the deck list of the person on that side of the screen. And so as opposed to having to type in, you know, exclamation deck list or something, you can just click on this tab and see what people are playing, see who that person is. Um, it's everywhere. I, I know so many streamers who use it. Um, they've done a really great job. SCG uses it on 
on all of their streams now. It's it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. the Cardboard Live folks are spectacular and really passionate about the game. Um, I got to see them at work at Grand Prix Los Angeles. Uh, the fact that it's being supported by Cardboard Live this whole tournament is, uh, I mean, it it can only make the experience better. Yeah. Yeah, it seems really sweet. And, uh, you know, this is one of those things that you, you kind of have from such a large and, and uh, involved community is they will develop this type of stuff to make a better experience for everybody, which is terrific. Yeah. All right. So let's move on here to uh, something interesting that uh, Brian Kibler said. Again, he's going to be casting at this event, but he, he wanted to note how big of a deal the Mythic Invitational is. He said, even if the winner has zero previous winnings, they will enter the lifetime top money earner in 23rd place wow. ahead of many Hall of Famers. You will immediately be ahead of Antoine Ruel if you have had zero lifetime earnings and you win the event. Wow. That is amazing. You'll be above Eric Froelich, friend of the show. Yeah. You, his lifetime earnings in Magic are not over 250K. They're only, only 247. So, the... That the is ridiculous. This event this weekend is going to be insane for Magic. This They have pushed the hype. This is the hype event. If we don't break something like six figures in viewers, I feel like we were doing something wrong. I don't know what they could have done correct. Maybe it's going to be in how they do the coverage. But well, it's if also, all things fire, I think we've got a huge chance for an incredible audience. And the other thing that, that specifically for you, Evan, after mm -hmm. the first Mythic Championship, you said, I want something different. Yes. Right? I want change from yes. pro tour coverage between that to now and this is that this, this is, is that. certainly much different than what we had before it's true and i'm i'm looking forward to it i hope they take with it take it and run run with it i want to see some stuff that other esports streams have done that uh, magic has never rich done is in the chat hi rich hagan oh no, yes aaron he'll be on london. Air london he'll be on air in london as will tim maria riley and simon okay Aww. good to know that's cool Straight from the horse's mouth so we do have confirmation. See, this is what I thought was going to happen, was that there was going to be a lot more regionalized coverage, mm -hmm. um, a lot more focused coverage, like they were doing with Grand Prix for a while. So mm -hmm. that makes a lot more sense. Absolutely. So uh, something that uh, they also tweeted about, Hipster the Coast tweeted about, in particular, was that there are pages that, the, there's player pages on the new esports site, which are, first of all, awesome, and also have some top-level stats, which is neat but they also kind of reference Pro Tours. But I thought they weren't Pro Tours. I thought they were Mythic Championships. Yeah, look, they can't figure out how they to... they acknowledge that in a tweet? I thought the official Magic account acknowledged that. It's like, hey, you know, it's okay to call it both. We're still working on that. It's fine. They said, yeah. you know, we don't want to erase the history of the PT, and we're going to continue to find a way to label that stat appropriately after we get a few more Mythic Championships under our belt, which, again, totally reasonable, totally yeah. understandable. Um, there are just two things right now in Magic that need fixing. At least they need a plan. If you haven't planned, please plan. One, what is up with the 2018 Magic Online Championships? Yeah, that's awkward. And that is still steaming in the background and no one has said anything about it. I think we've referenced it a couple times on the show, but yeah. because we've heard nothing, there's no news to report. But they've been advertising that there are a whole bunch of jobs open on the Magic Online side of things, so. Uh, and the second <clears throat> is, what is up with the Hall of Fame? You can't <laughs> both call someone a Hall of Famer and then not explain what it is what, on your website. Is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's going to be awkward. I th One of the rumors that I think is more jokey than real is they're just going to leave the Hall of Fame around for one more year so that everyone gets to vote for Reed Duke and then get rid of it. Um, <laughs> I this plan. I, I am I am still on board with there being a physical location for the Hall of Fame in yeah. Seattle and having it be less of a um, thing that affects your play in competitive worlds. Because right now, the Hall of Fame is benefits. The Hall of Fame is right. tactile. You get X dollars and Y invites and whatever. I think that it should just be what the Hall of Fame is for other sports, which is right. a place that you can go see the game's greats. And you don't have to give out these invites. All you need is a brass plaque that has the, the images of of Kai and John and all of the, the game's greats and have it in Seattle. And, and, and that's cool. I think that that is <clears throat> what I would prefer to have happen rather than for having it go away entirely. Well, look, it only took, I think a year and a half to two years for me to go on about what would ultimately be a modern horizons, which is make a modern, make a product where the cards go straight and modern. So if I just keep saying 
if you'll yeah. make a physical location that has your esports arena and your hall of fame attached to it that's that's how you make it work you have a gift shop right there and those three things make that thing hum and it would work and i think it would be great and be right there in seattle all the brass could show up every time r d could show up every time it would be the mecca you don't understand how people sort of think of things as this kind of destination location that they want to go to when i was in roanoke like they were like i wanted to go to the scg store because that was the place they right. wanted to go and the place they wanted to see even it's i did back, way back pilgrimage too yeah. yeah and those it's, things are it, important it's such a unique place in the world i mean when i went up there for uh i went up there to visit uh about uh, i was on dragon talk which is the D D podcast um, which is actually where the Broken Pact got hatched and uh, uh, finalized. Um, and, you know, it, it, whenever anyone goes to Wizards, they take a photo of the building and are like, I'm here, I finally made it to the to the end. And the dragon. This is the, this is mm -hmm. the goal. And they take the photo with the dragon and like, look at these hallowed halls. To have that once a year, uh, it, you know, would be would be spectacular. Um, you know, Seattle, I understand, is a difficult location for, for Europe to get to. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's it would be really nice. All right. So we're going to move on here to uh, <clears throat> a fun little thing, which we're going to draft our players right. for the uh... Mythic Invitational. And I have started said draft. Hopefully you guys can see it up and running. Great. The... So this is on <clears throat> thousandleagues.com. Right, which was formerly Pro Tour <laughs> drafting or something. Pro Tour or something, something. Sure, something, yeah. something. The point is, thousandleagues.com currently has these. Uh, you can do, you know, you pick X players or you do a snake draft. We're going to do a snake draft, um, okay. which is we choose our six players that we want to essentially, you know, follow as should be the best results in the event. Right. Now, uh, this is going to be a unique format, remember, because uh, this is a single, this is single elimination, right? D double elimination. Double elimination. Okay. Right. So there's double limb, and then they're gone. So choose carefully, as I choose LSV. So do I click the button? This is draft now. Uh, yeah. You have to wait for it. Like right now, it's to Ruben. Go ahead. Okay. I've chose you LSV. LSV. Well, let's let me see who LSV is playing in the first round here, because I'm going to take a big. I'm going to take that into account uh, quite a bit. To see Are you I'm, now? Oh, LSV is playing Cedric. Yeah, I think you're good. Um, <laughs> Okay, so um, he going... has a family. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just ruined that man's whole career. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, he's never I'm gonna going... unlock you now. Let's see here, man. There are some, there are some bruisers. Uh, wow. Uh, I am gonna start with quickly. Uh, you know, I, I, nothing against Gabby Sparks, but I'm gonna go with Bolivo. Uh, as my first pick, Lucas Esperberto uh, is Bolivo, I believe. Oh no, Bolivo is playing Asian Avenger. Here we go. Um, I like Asian Avenger, but Bolivo is a crusher on uh, Magic Online uh, and moved over to Arena uh, and is a just a spectacular uh, player. This is Lucas Esperberto. No, 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 not going with Lucas Esperberto. Different, okay. different. Uh, is Tiago, I believe. Yeah, Tiago Sabrina. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, but qualified through uh, qu the qualification of being in the top eight of the ladder. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to go uh, with, with him. Okay. So let me find his name on here. You're going to start typing it. It'll show up. Yeah, there we go. All right. Pick. Clicked. I clicked it. Why isn't it, why isn't it going? The pick. The, the, the pick plus there we button. go. Got it. All right. Found it. So am I hitting draft now? Uh, yes, if you okay. should see it, but okay. Uh, no, I see a Spark Madness and a Mythic Invitational. This was a bad idea. All right, we're going to move on here. <clears throat> this was a bad oh, never idea. Mind. It says join now. Okay. Uh -huh. I think I've complained about this website before. I always try to give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start off, obviously, obviously. I'm going to do hashtag Trans Mafia. I'm going to go with Autumn Burkett. Very nice. You also Even get a second though... pick. Even though they're playing against BDM, crowd favorite BDM. I mean, this is about more than just the one match. <laughs> Aaron, you get a second pick. Awesome. So I know who butters my bread. Um, mm -hmm. I've been very vocal about the fact that I he's been sleeping on the couch the last couple of leagues due to 
various incendiary tweets and comments about various pieces of graveyard hate, but there is a goatee happening, there is a beard happening, and and I'm happening, so I'm gonna choose Bay. <laughs> also known as Reed Duke. Absolutely. Ruben? Uh, I am going to scroll through here. You know what, we're gonna go with friend of the show, Hall of Famer, and uh, hopefully maintaining his spot in the current listing of uh, a 23rd overall in money, I'm going to go with Efro. Very nice. Well, I'm going to go ahead and I have two magical picks, which are always nice. I'm going to go ahead and go with Javier Dominguez, okay. who has clearly been running hot, which is great. Uh, and I'm going to pick uh, the manual, Seth Manfield. Okay. Nice. Both good picks. Very nice. Aaron, I believe it is. Or no, we're uh, no, it's yours turn. again. I don't know Savitz's <laughs> real name is the problem. I want to pick Savitz. Well, you're going to have to go to magicesports.com and figure it out. <laughs> I'm going to figure it out. Hold on. Who's who here? How do I how do I figure out what his real name is? Does it matter? Oh, yeah, because it's all real names yeah, here. His search. name is Jan, J-A-N-N-E, McConan. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm going to pick uh, him, uh, Jan McConan, because he's been a crusher in the Hearthstone Pro Leagues and ev pretty much everywhere you could be a pro in professional card games, uh, and and he has proven himself worthy. And uh, is one of my favorite streamers, mostly because he sort of talks like a Jarl from the Elder Scrolls <laughs> game. Oh, hey there, looks like you have just woken up. My name is Savitz. And uh, I really like that accent. So I'll try to, I, hopefully I'll get to do it again. All right, so my next pick has accents and accolades. She made history as the first lady in history uh, to um, to be the first woman to win a Grand Prix. Uh, she's beautiful, she's smart, she's so funny, and she's so talented. I am choosing Jessa Stefan for my next pick. Nice, well you right. get two, so. I do. Um, so I'm also gonna choose a young lady um, who, you know, made a bit of a fuss recently uh, by qualifying for the, I believe it's the top eight of the Mythics. She did the thing. Mm -hmm. And people were like, you only got there because your man plays. And she was like, I did this. I did this. And I am rooting so hard for her. I just have to find her name here. Um, I'm going to be adding Beatrice Grancha, also known as Aaliyah. Um, I hope she makes all of them eat it. I'm completely here for those. Nice. Very nice. All right. So that means it is, was it back to Ruben? Ruben? Back to my turn. <clears> yeah. <throat> Um, I, I just want to root for Numat, so I'm going to pick Numat, Kenji Egashira. Very nice. All right. So that means I have my two. I will, is that right? I take my two now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Got to wait till it pounces back to me. Sorry. Right. There, there we go. go. Excellent. Uh, let's see here. First of all, I definitely want to, not, I don't want to pass up at this point at three different options, three different times here. I don't want to pass up Huey anymore. Sure. So definitely taking William Jensen. Cool. Uh, and I got I got a hankering about Andrea Mangucci. The Gooch. Nice. That guy videos. is just too good at Magic the Gathering to not put uh, a little behind him. You have to watch his videos. Yeah. <laughs> Ruben? Um, you know, I'm going to keep going with, with Tice. Uh, I'm going to keep going with the Hearthstone pros making the move over to Magic. I think that they are going to be surprising a lot of folks. Um with with how good these new folks coming to the game are and so i think tice is a good choice very nice let's see uh aaron you have your final two i believe it is so i'm going to choose a young man who has officially entered his grown and sexy phase he's in a suit and tie phase literally and i am living for it uh my my next pick is going to be shahar shenhar nice, um nice. and then uh my final pick is another young lady who i am a big believer in. I've been a huge fan of her stream for a while. Um, if there's any sort of limited happening, she is going to kill it. I'm sure she's she's so much fun to watch. She's funny. She's smart. She's adorable. I am rooting for Jamie Topples, also known as Jamie Rigotti. So nice, nice. Get him, girl. All right. What is your final pick, Ruben? Man, there are so many good choices left to go. Um, I'm tempted to go with Show just to round out my choices, but I think I'm going to skip over that one because that's a rough group. He's got a a round one matchup against John Rolf and then a Paulo Vitor matchup uh, in the second round, assuming he wins his first. So those are some, those are some tough choices there. Um, man, there are just some killer matchups in these first rounds as well. Um, 
Remember, it is double elimination. I, I understand, but you, you, you got to win the first one to be able to move on. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, my buddy who taught me his system of how to win at craps uh, and has also won a Pro Tour and also has a ton of success uh, in various card games of his own. Alexander Hain is going to be my last pick. Very nice. Well, look, you mentioned him, and there's only one Dance Dance Revolution for me, and that is Paulo Vitor, Damo DeRosa. That guy is incredibly good we can check out our teams now my team and feel free to go through your own my team is paulo vitor dama de rosa andrea Mangucci, william jensen seth manfield javier dominguez and luis scott vargas ruben my team is alexander hayne tice molendi kenji egashira jan mikkonen eric frolic and tiago saparito my team is Jamie Topples, also known as Jamie Rigotti, Shahar Shenhar, Beatrice Aliyah Grancha, Jess Stefan, Reed Duke, and Autumn Burkett. All right. So let's go ahead and move on here to a different topic almost altogether. There is, let me back up a little bit. <clears throat> a few weeks ago, when Wizards fired all of their support staff and, <laughs> and took it out of the country. That is the best segue I've ever heard. <laughs> It's true. Not even easing us into it. Just it's not what I do here. I'm giving no. you the facts now. Just, just jumping into that one dry. All when right. they did that, there was a rumor that there was a program called Magic Blitz, and it was it was a way to play Magic on your phone. Oh and they yeah. Were, and they were like, oh no, if that exists, then that means Magic Arena on your mobile is probably unlikely to exist. Yes. And then uh, this week, uh, just a few about five days ago. The exclusive reveal of Valor's Reach. Now, Valor's Reach, if you don't recall, was the location of Battle Bond, the big giant stadium. Or whatever I did there. not recall that. I didn't either. It's okay. But uh, that said, that is the stadium where the magic duels were fought, far, uh, were fought there. And this is a mobile card game that is, quote unquote, not trying to recreate the physical card game and thus won't be confused with Arena. And instead, very much its own unique thing. Now, there is there was definitely some backlash, goods and bads. This, to me, 100% says there's going to be no arena on your phone. Wasn't there also an interview with um, Moose, Squirrel, uh, Bear? Bear? Yeah. Bear. Uh, didn't Bear do an interview as well where he basically said it wasn't coming to Mac either? Uh, yeah. It was about the other platforms and that okay. their, their goals for the other I platforms. I saw a lot of people were upset about that, too. But the idea, and here's sort of, I came around to it for a few reasons. I think this is actually a good thing for, I mean, obviously it's great for Wizards because it's yet another collection that you can, you know, you know, keep up with rares and mythics and whatever. Um, but there's, we, there's just too many permanents in the game of magic. Like when everybody's like, well, Hearthstone was on mobile, blah, blah, blah. Well, Hearthstone only gives you like what? Seven creature slots. That's it. Right. You only get seven yeah. creatures in a row and that's all eternal. You only get somewhere between six and seven. I can't remember. Because they limit those numbers. And because you limit those numbers, you're not worried about having to accommodate for tens of tokens. You know what I mean? And, and right. you make four of this and five of this and seven of that. They, they don't, that, doesn't, that never comes into play because they have that restriction that's very important. And it basically, it looks to me as that's the restriction they have here. Is it's still magic as you know it, but you, know, you don't want to have 37 different tokens on the board. It's just unmanageable. So rather than try to shoehorn magic as standard as we know it into this weird little niche of, well, now there's going to have to be a new world order of you can't make a bunch of tokens and you can't make too many permanents. Hmm. Instead, say we're going to cull magic into this sort of different way to play and do it that way. And for those who are like, well, this is, you know, this is not magic, quote unquote. We play magic in a bajillion different ways. Magic is everybody's game to depending on what you want it to be. Commander has its own rule set, its own ban list. Vintage is just the weird, wild, unknown. Cube is an entire set that is built out of like, it is basically a designer block of what it wants you, you to you experience. You can play mental magic. That's Absolutely. Okay. You can play mental magic. You can play the, the lands game or whatever. Like there's a million Battle different boxes? ways. Yeah, there's Wizard a million ways power? to, right. There's a million ways to play magic. This is just a different way to play magic. And it, it's, this, I'm okay this with This one's it. a little different, though, because... It's a little different. Qu I'm quoting here. We're excited to be partnering, partnering with Seismic Games, a great mobile studio known for such hits as Marvel Strike Force for the development of, of Valor's Reach. Um, which means, now I'm sure that, that, is a, that Seismic Games are great. That means that this game is not being created and pro produced by Magic the Gathering and Wizards of the Coast, a subsidiary of Hasbro, exclusively. Sure, it's far And out. so it is different than just being a different format. And that's fair. So, 
so you know, while I'm not, um, I'm not, I'm, I'm not terrified of what this is. I just think it's weird and probably not magic as we know it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna wait and see what this is before I even consider downloading it. Um, because this is because I don't know what Magic Puzzle Quest was still, but I knew that it wasn't magic, and yeah. so I didn't play it. Right, and that was a a a match three game essentially. And this, at least, is the way it's been sold: is that it is somewhat more of a game of magic than, okay. again, a, putting a match three game, a bejeweled, if you will, on top of magic. Now, I have I have the uh, the article here from Touch Arcade. I've linked it in the show notes. I've linked it in the chat. And uh, the one thing that is concerning is that this developer and things like Marvel Strike Force, as I understand them, are very much in the pay to win category. Right. Of you're never going to get the best of the best, the premium, the mythic, the whatever, unless you spend a whole lot of dollars. Sure, and that's but a it's a trading card game. There's no avoiding in-app purchases if you're going to have a trading card game. Right. So there, there's a lot of focus on one-handed use, which this was also a weird focus that Nintendo had for the Super Mario handheld game, but okay. Mm. Um, there's a really cool art style that I think is really unique and interesting. Yeah, the art style looks super <clears throat> cool, I gotta say. I really like what they've done with this sort of... It's not really, like, I don't know what it is. It's very Tim Burton-y. In but, some ways, and it's uh, in some ways sort of the new 3D movies they've been doing of the the new Grinch that they did and the new oh sure the, yeah it is real dream kind, of, uh, kind yeah. of inspired. But ultimately, again, this to me is a different way to play Magic. I love playing Magic. It's not just a a, a you know a, a match three sure. reskin or whatever, and we'll see what they do with it. Just not sure. That said, let's keep moving here to a fundraiser. And Aaron, I can imagine you'd be very excited about this. This is us <laughs> gearing back up for the Pride. Yeah, I'm really, really excited about this. So uh, the first time this came around, uh, I bought one of the Planeswalker symbol t-shirts. It, it comes in a rainbow uh, design and I've worn it everywhere. I've worn it to Vegas, I've worn it to Opens. And every time I go to an event, so many people ask me, where did you get that shirt? And it feels terrible to be able to tell them, well, it was a limited time thing, you can't have one. And I've tried sending trick messages of like, hey, can you please make more of these shirts. And he says, you know, they'll get around to it. One of the big reasons why I wore it to the pre pre-release was because I was hoping that enough people would watch the show, want to get the t-shirt, they would flood wizards and then wizards would cave. And it probably didn't work out that way, but they are doing another round of this fundraiser for this particular uh, organization. Uh, the shirts look a little different this time around. They're not taking up the whole shirt, um, right. but they're also offering you more things. There's life pads, water bottles, pop sockets, uh, I mean, the t-shirts, tank tops. Um, tote bags. Tote bags. Like There's we're flags, NPR, which I love. Like banners or flags you can hang from your store, from your ceiling. And so yep. uh, be sure to pick up a little something if you can. Uh, they're really well made, good quality, good cause. Um, and and they're just, it's just really nice to have. Buy a flag for your local game store, perhaps. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I really like these notepads. I'm probably going to pick up one of these D&D uh, notepads. You can get them with the Planeswalker symbol or the ampersand for both. Very nice. Um, so the ambassador-bound notebooks are really what I'm uh, I'm probably going to pick up a couple of these. Sweet. Well, uh, in other news, congratulations to uh, Wyatt Darby for being yeah. the newest addition to the Magic the Gathering <laughs> roster for Tempo Storm. thought that was yeah. really cool. Great pickup, uh, you know, Pro Tour winner. Um, it, it just makes perfect sense for him to join Tempo Storm, being a full-time gamer already and a full-time streamer already. Uh, a great fit for that team that seems to be put together primarily of people who have been pro streamers for a very long time at the top of their game. So uh, joining the other fine folks on Team Tempo Storm. Yeah, um, Wyatt is, is super good at uh, at streaming itself. Uh, I, I watched some of his content, and the way that he kind of sort of casually explains what's going on and why he's doing the things he does, really interesting. He always interacts with all of his chat really well. Uh, you can tell he's just sort of a uh, he's a seasoned pro at this point uh, in in all aspects, I guess as you'd say. Yeah, absolutely. And joining uh, a couple of other favorites from the show, uh, competitors Caleb Durward and MTG Nerd Girl, uh, Brittany, uh, who are both going to be in the Invitational, as well as our good buddy Jeff Hoagland, uh, adding Wyatt Darby to that roster. Um, I mean, just further solidifying Tempo Storm <clears throat> in the community already. Yeah. So there is an interesting twist with the way that Wizards of the Coast is going to be previewing and showing off all the cards from War of the Spark. 
and this is something that they've told us about and that they finally mentioned publicly, which is uh, they're going to be previewing cards in what they call scenes, quote unquote. All cards previewed on a single day will have a connection to a story point, an event, or a key location in roughly chronological order. Then, starting Monday, we'll be posting scenes of around four or five cards to paint the picture of what's happening. Think of mm. them like little storyboards using the cards, the art, and the flavor text to give an overview of what's happening. And of course, our preview card is going to be woven into the middle of that and and it's super interesting, and I'm super excited to show it to everybody. Our yeah. preview card is good. Yeah, by the way, we have a preview card. I don't know. We, if we have a preview card. That. It's good. And it was just one of those that I had to do a double take of where it was like, I thought I knew I had read it, I knew what it did. And then when I when I saw the package of like the text, the art, and I was like, <clears> oh, <throat> oh, <laughs> and realized there was a hell of an Easter egg in there. And I was like, I'm in. So hopefully yeah. you all like it as much as we do. Yeah. yeah, it's it's uh it's an interesting one. That's for sure. So we, when are we are we allowed to announce when we're doing our preview card, Evan? Uh, I believe so. I don't know the date actually offhand. Um, oh. It'll be on a Wednesday. It'll um, be on Wednesday. <clears throat> but that said, the other twist is that normally they just do two weeks of previews. And then like at the very end on that Friday, they show you the rest of the comments or uncommons or whatever. But this time they're going to preview everything from the most mythic of rares, to the most common of commons. From all the way for the next three weeks, which I think is awesome. Somewhere around. I think that's a great idea. It is. Us. Around eight years ago, I think it was around eight years ago, uh, I was at Pro Tour Honolulu and I was talking to somebody in Wizards and they were just like, you know, no one's going to get excited about seeing a common. I'm like, yes, they are. If it's a new magic card, I don't care what's on it. If it's a common, if it's an uncommon, rare, just like people love to see new it's magic a new cards. Common, I think if you give it to the right people, like if you give it to a pauper person, you know, if right. you give it to somebody of a certain, if they play a certain archetype that that card might fit in with, if you give it to a cosplayer, like if there's a planeswalker on that card and that person's played it, there's plenty of ways that you can turn that. Sure. That trash into treasure. Yep. And we, uh, there's, and there's a preview for coolstuffinc.com and it is, it is nice. Oh it's my gosh. Nice. I, I like it a lot. Um, all right, so let's keep on moving here. Uh, I, I don't feel we have a lot of time to touch on the report from Dana on day two, but Dana did make day two. Dana which, Fisher made day two and then wrote a tournament report about it. Which is which, impressive. A lot of words. I, I don't think I could have written a tournament report at age nine. <laughs> it's true. Um, also had a props and slops section, which <laughs> wow. to the heyday of wow. tournament reports um uh which i absolutely loved which yeah, is great between her and abram i mean these kids are just doing so much where and they're teaching us adults a thing or two as well like dana also talks about kind of tournament prep and how she practices for events and it's like i i'm writing this down <laughs> so uh let me move on here to desperate ravings and this week, uh, Mark Rosewater wrote about the storm scale. Now we know what the storm scale is, which in terms of mechanics that are good, but essentially are good or bad are going to be reprintable or not reprintable. Uh, at the forefront would be stuff like flying. That would be in all the sets. And at the end, it would of course be dredge because it's broken. It's not actually magic and it's okay. Yeah, we don't play the magic. <laughs> Who cares? All right, so we don't have a ton of time, but I do want to point out a few things that he noted. Well, firstly, he noted colored artifacts have a storm scale rating of two, which yeah. means they are not only just likely to be coming back, but like likely to be coming back a lot, mm -hmm. like a yeah. whole lot. And I'm, I'm cool with that. That's great. Me too. Another thing he mentioned was vehicles are a storm scale rating of two. And they also mentioned that ve colorless vehicles in particular are tricky to balance because if they're generally strong, they'll end up in every deck. So they want to find designs to make sense in certain decks, but not others. And having vehicles, of course, with colors in their mana cost would help greatly in terms yeah. of making that. So, so the smuggler's cool. copter doesn't just take over the world. Exactly. I like that idea. I like making vehicles multi or a, a single colored, multicolored, whatever, what have you, uh, in order to sort of lower their utility a little bit. And here is what I was not expecting. This this was my biggest surprise. My biggest surprise was he mentioned the punch out counters. If you recall, oh, packs of that Amaket. That was your biggest surprise. Well, right. it was based on what he said, which he said, you know, the, the punch out counters from Amaket and uh, our devastation, which had like embalm and exerted and little brick counters and stuff on them. Right. Um, he mentions that that is a three on the storm scale. He is very bullish on punch out technology. He says, as the person responsible for mapping out the future of potential design space, I see this as something that has the ability to shift. What what magic is capable of it is possible one day this will drop down to a two and be sure. an ongoing deciduous part of magic design that is huge i was more taken aback by the fact that energy got a six like only a six like he was very kind when it came to energy and i was like 
really. <laughs> I like the idea of energy. I wish it wasn't busted. Me too. Yeah, I, me, I was expecting him to be a little harder on it than he was. Mm -hmm. For me, my most surprising, I thought, was the difference between Embalm and uh, Eternalize, mm -hmm. yeah. which players seem to really like Embalm and not so much Eternalize, and says that the Storm Scale of 5, if returning to Amonkhet, uh, for Embalm, as opposed to the Storm Scale, I think, of eight, eight. for Eternalize. Oh. It was just such a discrepancy for such a, a similar abilities. Um, and yeah. I thought that that was pretty surprising as well. Yeah, there were a couple of other gems I, know I really liked here. I like that when he's talking about Aftermath, he says that um, Aftermath plays well, but has a lot of restrictions that make using it tricky. And on top of that, a card frame that was mostly disliked. <laughs> like, that's yeah. putting it lightly. Um, and then I like the fact that he kind of gives us a little hint when it comes to Afflict. Um, he says that Afflict was originally meant to be um, a something that was a, a nod towards War of the Spark, a throw forward mechanic to War of the Spark, um, but the way it played out, it didn't end up being a good fit. And so the most obvious mm. place for its return, which sounds like it was supposed to be War of the Spark, uh, didn't happen. And so I was really surprised to see that. And I yeah. just love reading about these in general. I love that Improvise was a nice five. We could very well see that again. I don't think that was broken when it very well could have been. Um, and I love things like this. I love seeing that and, and just to see you know, his perspective as to what we, the players, think is busted or weak. Oh, yeah. The, the Eternal Lies was the only, literally the only mechanic that was no, noted as unpopular. So, like, mm -hmm. yeah. that one's dead. GG. I don't think we ever want to see Eternal Lies again, and that's yeah. okay. Um, all right. So, let's move on here to um, <clears throat> to winning a car, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and a tournament in Alabama is going to give away a 2005 Ford Mustang to the winner. <laughs> Love it. The second wow. place gets a booster box of Modern <laughs> Masters 2013, 15, 17, Eternal, Iconic, Masters 25, and Ultimate Masters. Wow. Yeah. Four boxes of Modern Horizons to third and fourth. Two boxes of Modern Horizons to fifth. You can through. sell those and buy a better car. <laughs> right. Yeah, the problem with giving away a car on something like the Price is Right or any anything along those lines is the taxes that are involved. Yeah. Oh. And you know, sometimes you get a, you win a car and then you don't want it. Um, uh, Longtime viewers of Magic: The Gathering will remember that one Mr. Sam Black burst onto the scene by be by besting 385 other players uh, to be able to win a FJ Cruiser uh, at Worlds in 2007. Jeez. Um, and with with cards as notable as Boggart shenanigans in his red black <laughs> goblin stack. Um, yeah, it was. It's it's been a minute since we've had a car tournament, but I think it's hilarious. It's mm. it's pretty interesting. I'll put the links here in the chat for those who want to check it out. Um, yeah, there is that factor of just like I want a car. Oh God, the sales tax is what? Because you're gonna have to go and register it, and to register you gotta pay the taxes on it. And even if it's a 2005, that car's still worth five or six grand, and that's still gonna be a thing. Car is dope. <clears throat> the car is sweet. Um, so so pre-registration is forty five dollars, fifty bucks at the door. What's the format? This is a modern tournament. Oh, okay. Prize support is guaranteed paid down to top 32 if they break 300 people. Wow. Um, and so this is in, I want to shout this out because we're talking about it. This is at Gamers in, and Geeks in Mobile, Alabama. So you still got your time to, uh, you still got a, a month or two to be able to, to get your plans to go down to Mobile to win yourself an automobile. That's right. This is not going to happen until June 15th, 2019. So if you want to get your plans in now, get to Mobile, check it out. Not bad. Super, super neat. Uh, I wanted to touch real quickly on uh, something that uh, Andrea Mangucci had mentioned, like, hey, someone had pointed, had showed one of those, like, you know, sort of beta frame things where they did thought sees, but they did it in a beta frame with the beta, to, you know, the beta font and all this other stuff. Um, and, you know, he said, you know, how cool would it be if these were invocations? And someone said, well, look, Mark Rosewater frequently says on his Q&A that the reason they can't have promos in the old frame is that they have readability and legibility problems, to which I would say... <laughs> and he says here, he says, it's not just a logistics issue. We also don't want the return of the old frames. They have huge legibility issues. The people that you would make these promos for don't, don't care. Don't care. Not at all. Not like a little bit, like a little, like a shred. You know, know what this is? This is the perfect judge promo. 
This yeah. is the promo that you make for judges who don't care, who would love something weird and obscure, and who are happy to absorb something that's like cool, it's retro, it's a throwback, it's unique, it's only you can get it through that program. That is the perfect outlet for something weird and strange like that. I agree we don't want to put beta-looking stuff in, in new packs. That's why you make promos, because promos are sweet. And it's just weird to just shoot it down entirely versus saying, as they, as they say many times, you know, they don't make all cards for all types of players. Well, maybe you don't make all promos for all types of players either. You know what I mean? Just, just a thing you can do. Yeah. Um, all right here. So we are running out of time. I think I wanted to touch a bit on uh, some splash damage here. The Hearthstone, uh, Hearthstone has a new upcoming set called Rise of Shadows. And I was like, oh, cool. I wonder what's going on with a new set of Hearthstone. I haven't played that game in a long time. And right. I went to a site, and I'll put the link here in the chat so you guys can see it. And I was I was greeted with a grid that showed dates and times as to when each card is going to be spoiled from the set, I, as far oh, as I know, cool. until it's totally spoiled entirely. And I was like, oh my god, this is great. Can Brilliant. you imagine if we had this for magic? And An so, official site that has it. Oh, yeah. And so I was thinking, I was like, okay, well, all right, so let's, let's put ourselves in Wizard's shoes, okay? They're not going to want to show you the artwork. They're not going to want to show even a little snippet of artwork along with the date and the time. And I'm like, well, it's, yeah, it's not what you, you'd want to put there anyway. What you'd want to put there is the outlet. If you said, you know, March 27th, 11 p.m. and had a Magic Mike's logo on that, and that was the, you know, when the, when the preview showed up, we would make that happen. And one of the pieces of feedback, the, the piece of feedback they gave was that, well, he, he deals with a whole lot of outlets and yeah. they may they may miss their mark or they may miss their deadline or whatever. And I'm like, let me tell you, if you put this kind of site together and you put their face or their brand or their whatever, you know, their podcast on that and say a date and a time, they're going to hit that date and time because they want the promotion that you're giving them, not only on this website, but on that day right. when you say, today you're gonna to get previews from X and Y and Z, and they're gonna give you those previews. I guarantee it, it's just gonna happen. I don't wanna put anything <clears throat> spoiler out of business, but I think Wizards yeah. probably does. Maybe. Um, I think that this is a obvious opportunity to get more traffic to whatever website Wizards of the Coast wants people to visit. Um, what's the last time any of y'all visited dailymtg.com? I was there today. Were you? I mean, it's it's been a minute, I, but I click on it from Reddit when I want to read the new stories. Right. That's the only time I visit Daily MTG anymore. That's... But this seems like a really obvious way to get people to come to the site. Yeah. So that that was really interesting. Um, <clears throat> we have time for another little uh, story here, which was uh, Dota Two uh, Defense of the Ancients Two now lets you bet in-game currency on pro events. Oh, that's hilarious. I love that. Can you imagine that a they gave you... A gambling economy? Are we going to run the numbers over Arena? Maybe. Oh, Maybe. But, but awesome. it would be... Well, but it would be very sort of siloed, as it were, right? Like, you'd just be betting against the house, as it were. You would say, sure. I bet 100 gems that, you know, Reed makes top eight or whatever. Right. And they give you 200 back if you win, or you lose the 100, obviously, if you lost. Is that a thing that would entice you on Magic Arena to do any of that sort of stuff? I mean, probably. It's it's kind of bizarre that they're like encouraging actual gambling when they've had all these issues with with loot boxes recently. It's true. Um, like that's that's an odd thing to think of. Like, oh, loot boxes have been a problem. What if we actually just you know took out the middleman and let the players actually just gamble? Um, that's kind of bizarre. But I think it's a cool idea, and I would definitely be interested in... I mean, we have so many folks in Magic who are involved with uh, Pinnacle Sports betting, for example. I know Yelger, uh, Vigersma would set the lines for Pro Tours. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there are odds for the Invitational this weekend that are available somewhere. Um, and, and yeah, I think that that's... I think it's a cool idea. The implementation is, is fishy, having just seen this story right now because i didn't read the story ahead of time mm -hmm. um but using in-game currency that doesn't translate to real world currency is a great idea right that to me sounds like something interesting like it and i guess to to put it to your perspective aaron like this would be would you bet tickets on autumn burchette doing well in the mythic invitational 
You know what I mean? Like, at, at which point are you just like, hmm? But you it's got to not translate to real world dollars. It can't translate to real world dollars, which is actually so why it's it, bad for Magic. It doesn't work. Well, I'm only saying that to try to give her a frame of reference as to things that she would barter, you know, bet for for games. Because he knows I don't play arena. Because <laughs> I know right. she doesn't play arena, so I'm just like, I know she doesn't want gems. So <laughs> right. Care. So, it would so. Be, what would it be for arena? It would be uh, gold in arena, right? Because uh, gems translate to real world dollars. Right, but you can't get the money out. That's the problem with the tickets. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Because once you put the money into gems, no matter what you do with it, if you bet, bet it, would it still be gold. It. We could be like, I bet 500 gold on yeah, you know, on red. Spin the wheel. Right. That's that that in of itself I found super interesting. I don't know if it's a thing or it's good or bad, but I think it's a industry movement that is worth watching as to whether yeah. other games want to try to incorporate something like that, which just essentially makes you more invested in the results of whatever event that you're in. And if you're just essentially playing with fun bucks, yeah. is that good enough? If you're using Disney dollars and you're betting, you know, non-redeemable Doesn't coupons. gambling also open you up to, like, possible, like, sabotage or, like, collusion or, like... Yes, idiot. and that's why... That's why making it not translatable to real world currency is so important. Right. If if you could turn whatever you want into dollars, I think then you could have a serious problem with big bets being placed and you know games being thrown. Celtic Demon gets me. Celtic Demon was like Aaron would bet on a pool for the next source of drama or PR disaster. I would make a pool of who's gonna screw up their public apology. Like which of these characters Ooh. is more likely to screw up publicly and not know how to get themselves out of it? That's a pool I would absolutely contribute to. So here we go, Aaron. Which one, the next time that Evan and I have something that goes horribly wrong, which one of us is, is more likely to have a bad apology? Honestly, I, I think it would be Evan. I think Evan's would be too Yay. polished or too, too robotic or like too corporate. Like, I just don't think it would be human enough. Mm. Wow. Yeah. You do a bad human impression, Evan. <laughs> Thanks, guys. He's more orange than man this is, now. This is the weirdest... Okay, backhanded compliment, sure. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm I'm not human enough. Got it. Uh, all right, so. Well, that's one of the reasons people said they love the pre-show is they like hearing you swear because it makes you right. human. Someone said that in Discord this morning. There you go. Yeah. Makes me real. I'm real. All right, we're going to pick a winner here <laughs> for our $50 gift certificate. Mighty real. Com. So real. Congratulations to a little aloof. Hey. Hey. Oh, a long time fan, friend of the show. Well Joe's deserving. a friend at this point. Joe is the young man who assembles all of our, all yeah. of the links, all the topics that we paste in the Discord. He gathers them together. Now it's in a Google Doc. Before he used to just do it every week. Manually and, type yeah. in the stuff. Yeah, we have a permanent Google Doc that he updates. And so every time, you know, we record, we use his notes and his collections to do that. So we could not do the show without him. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well deserving winner there. Thank you so much. Uh, get in contact with uh, Aaron. Remember, she might have blocked you already. You don't know. <laughs> I know I wouldn't fingers. block Joe. Okay. That one we're safe. That one we're safe. Yeah. That said, I want to thank our, our subscribers and our bit givers. Uh, let's get started here with the business. That the business. Re, the business that resubscribed yeah. for five months. Thank you so much. Uh, Mogwai1512 subscribed. Welcome to the channel. Uh, Super Nintendo Chalmers 1998 resub for eight months. I'm ready to give you that nine month little uh, badge thing soon so we're gonna nice. figure that out is it gonna be a sub baby is it gonna be hashtag five kids for oh, nine months it could be uh nice. that said uh they have a, a note here that that's where i saw the leprechaun he told me to burn things i don't know what that means it's another that's another simpsons reference nice sexy soy resub for six months in a row and again i want to give you a badge for that uh half a year of supporting my favorite podcast they say thank oh you so thank much. you you are terrific. Jersey Brick Litter resub for 12 months subversary. Oof. Nice. I want to give you a badge for it. We're going to do this. Thunder Voice I think one. That our, I think our six month badge has to have the letters N I underneath it. And then our nine month badge has to have C E under it. And nice. nice. Not, wow. Wow. All right. So Thunder Voice one also resubscribe resubscribe for 12 months. One full year achieved. Hashtag mythic invitational hype. Uh, Sugar Bear has resub for two months. Thank you so much. Let's see here. Milk Wave sub for, uh, via Prime. Welcome to the channel. Ali Eldrazi, subscribe. Hey, Ali. Hey, How you Ali. doing? Ali. What's up, That's buddy? Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it, bud. Hope you're having the a great night. The patron saint of Lich's mastery. It's true. Mm. It's true. Uh, Ruben, you'll go through our bits. Yeah. Uh, and since I did the Savitz impression earlier in the show, oh I think God. I'll do it like this. House of Shadow with the traditional 69 bits. That's very nice for 69 <laughs> 
<laughs> Mr. Lubufu, also 69 bits. Also nice. Well done. Paperclip Monger, 84 bits. Thunder Voice underscore one. 169 bits. One nice. <laughs> Smil Cows with the 300 bits. Martin Kesa, 431 bits. And Eternally Tribal, 600 bits. You guys are great. Thank you so, so much. Let's go ahead and turn the corner here to the finisher on the last surviving Tumblr page. Mark Rosewater's blogatog, the head designer for Magic the Gathering, said, quote, The global series started because we were making an entry-level product for China and wanted the content available for others. It wasn't intended necessarily as an ongoing thing because he has a slightly different definition of series than the rest of us, but I think there's more possibilities out there for future global series. So with that in mind, where would you hope the global series heads to next, Ruben? Well, China is a big market, but there's more unclaimed territory for Magic to aim for, namely the widely touted Brazilian gaming community. I really want that, especially if it's what I think it would be and pay an homage to Magic Online Chat with Global Series Ja 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 versus BR BR BR. Yes. <laughs> Aaron? Well, heck there, Mr. Orange, as a gosh darn Wisconsinite, I want Global Series Canada. So I'm just more excited than a moose in heat for Global Series Sheila McKenzie versus Doug Mafra, don't you know? I have no idea. This <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, China, of course, is a huge market Wizards was hoping to attract, but I think there is another untapped economy much more interested in magic. Of course, I'm talking about the ever-growing economy of former artifact players. So I am looking forward to Global Series Valve versus Player Retention. Oof. Oh, that, that one hurts. Oh, a little stingy on that one. But that yeah. does end another live episode of Magic Mike's. Thank you for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you so much for having me. It was a real pleasure. It's a joy. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you for having me, and I look forward to the Invitational this weekend. I wouldn't want to miss it. I'm surrounded <laughs> by madmen. All right, let's do this. <laughs> Go to our final slide. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsors, CardHoarder.com and Cardamajigs.com. My co-hosts, Aaron Campbell and Ruben Bressler, you guys for watching and listening. I hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mics. Please follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe to everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us online on our Discord, Twitch.tv at Magic Mics, on Twitter at Magic Mics Cast, our Magic Mics subreddit, and like the Magic Mics page on Facebook. Talk to us privately at Magic Mics Podcast at gmail.com. Follow the audio-only podcast at Magic Mics Podcast .com, or find us on iTunes or join us here next week. Same time, same place for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody.